Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3, uh, verse 3. <clears throat> and Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. Verse 4 says, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And this is what Moses responded with. He said, here am I. The Lord caused a fire to be upon the bush. And the bush was on fire, but it was not consumed in so much that it got Moses' attention. And Moses stopped what he was doing. Moses paused what he was doing to go hear the voice of God. And Moses, when he went to the bush, the bush said, Moses, Moses. And his response was simply this, here am I. I want you to look at your neighbor and shout, neighbor. God is sending divine interruption. Divine interruption. That's going to be our uh, series for the next two Sundays. Somebody shout divine interruptions. Now, um, some, some of you uh, can really look at this screen and think back to when, uh, when we, some of us getting ready to tell our age, to when TV would go off past a certain time. And I'm not talking about the power button, but I'm talking about after the particular show would go off at a certain time, the station would put up this type of screen, or either it would put up the Statue of Liberty or the American flag, and it would just play Star Spangled Banner or whatever over and over as a sign that we have interrupted this broadcast. Y'all remember that, too? Whenever there was a special news bulletin, we interrupt this broadcast. And, and, and what that signifies is that there was an interruption, hear me, that was unscheduled. We expect commercial breaks during TV. But oftentimes when we are watching something, I don't know about you, but uh, I don't know if your mind can go back to when 9-11 happened. And uh, some of you can remember exactly where you were if you were going to work or getting ready for school or whatever the case may be. I was living out in California, and I think it was about 5 o'clock or so. Um, and I remember getting ready to go to school, and uh, my morning routine uh, was to watch Sports Center. And uh, even Sports Center had gotten interrupted uh, because of the, the, the World Trade Center and, and all of that stuff. Everybody's life was interrupted. It was not planned. It was extremely unexpected. But the thing that I've realized about 9-11 is even when those in interruptions happened that were not expected, after 9-11, we made plenty of adjustments. Airports are not the same. Travel isn't the same. Uh, the, way we, the way we look at certain people, if we can be honest, on the plane is not the same. And how you, even, how you even maneuver throughout things are not the same. Interruptions have a way of changing the rest of your life. I want you to look down your row and say, neighbor, the reason why I am today is because I experienced an interruption. Some of you don't realize you are mean and some of you don't realize you are hurt. Some of you don't realize you are frustrated because of a particular interruption that happened in your life that you didn't plan for. And after the interruption, you simply adjusted. So in other words, you were in a great relationship with somebody, but they cheated on you. It didn't end well. It wasn't the best relationship. And so now because of that interruption, that unplanned situation in your life, you spend the rest of your life making everybody else pay for what one person did. Because of a friendship that didn't end the way that it was supposed to. You spend the rest of your life making every other friend pay for what they did. I want to even talk to some parents in here. If you are not careful, you will make your children pay for what your parents did. Because of, the, because of interruptions. Life 
has a way of throwing curveballs at us. And we will experience things that we did not plan for. But look at your neighbor and say, you got to learn how to handle it. My question to you is, we've experienced all of these life interruptions and all of these life uh, twists and turns. Even the, 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 the writer says life is, swilled with, life is filled with swift transitions. In other words, you can wake up one day and your life be one way. You can go to sleep and wake up the next and your life is totally different. And, the, and, and it is important that we understand that we are going to experience those things. But the question is, we've experienced life transitions. We've experienced life interruptions. But how many of us can authentically say we've experienced a divine interruption? There is, I want you to hear me, a tug of war in your life between who's going to get your attention first. Is it going to be Satan or is it going to be God? And what happens is, is Satan desires to throw so many interruptions at you. Satan desires to throw so many things at you to knock you off your game that by the time a divine interruption comes in your mind and in your life, you saying stuff like, I can't afford to switch my life anymore. I can't afford to change anymore. I already feel like I'm behind time. I already feel like I'm missing time. I'm already feeling like I'm losing time so when God allows something to hit your life that you actually like you get frustrated and think that it's the devil when in fact it might really be God mm. I want you to look at your neighbor and say neighbor the worst thing you can do in this season of your life is blame the devil for what God is allowing I want to propose to you that maybe your job was interrupted not because of the devil working on your job. Maybe your job was interrupted because God wants to send a divine interruption your way. I need you to understand and hear me tonight that you will hear me today that you will have your plans. You will have your agenda. You will have your goal. But God has a way of interrupting life to make you question him to the point to where you will say, God, is this really you? Because this is how I know a lot of us will question God because the interruption goes against our prayers. <laughs> I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> this is how I know we have. It, it, the interruption oftentimes goes against our prayers because in our minds, our minds are set to where if I'm praying to God about it, he must be okay with it. When the fact of the matter is just because you prayed about it don't mean he's supposed to answer it. <laughs> And so when the interruption goes against our prayers, that's why we automatically assume that it's the devil. So, for example, we can say, Lord, bless me with a house, a nice eight bedroom house, God. And you work, you get your credit all together, you get your money all together, you do all of that. And then, you know, everything looks like it's going good. And then all of a sudden, here comes a bad report. Here comes something with the loan officer. Here comes something on your credit report. And now they're saying you can't get the house anymore. And you get frustrated with God and you think it's the devil because in your mind you prayed about this house. You danced about this house. You snotted about this house. You worshipped about this house. And everything was going good. And now there's an interruption. So it has to be the devil. But what if it's God? know I'm a married so-and-so. We've been together for this long. He gonna put a ring on my finger. I know I'm a married so-and-so. We've been together this long. She's been cooking for me. I didn't met her whole family. Everything's gonna work out. But then it doesn't work according to your plan. I prayed about him. God showed me him. I prayed about her. God showed me her. And remember, for those of you who've been with me long enough, it is very well possible that when you have dysfunctional discernment, you will think that God answered your prayer when the devil just answered your craving. I, can I get three amens? 
we're going to be all right. It's just two parts to this series. It's this Sunday and next Sunday. Um, and so we've got to be in the same vein as God because if not, we will blame the devil for what God has allowed. Somebody shout divine interruption. Are we willing to let God interrupt our plans? Are we willing to let God interrupt our lives? I know that there's somebody in here who's saying I should have been married by this time. I should have this many children by this time. I should have this car, this house. I know I should be this. I should have this degree by this time. But I am here to let you know that you are not where you think you should be because God is interrupting your plans. And I think we should take 10 seconds to praise God for interrupting our plans. Hear me, and the praises are going to go up because his plan is always better than mine. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to move on, I'm going to get to the text, but if 10 people will shout, and I know Tasha will be one of them, God had to break your heart to preserve your future. Because if we can be honest, there were some times in our life where God, uh, the situation broke our heart. And we were like, God, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. But then when you look back over your life, you say, God, thank you for that. I would have rather cried for five months than to be in trouble for the five years that God interrupted. Maturity says... I jump and I shout just as loud for the no as I do for the yes. And when you're real mature, I'll jump and shout for the no louder than I will shout for the yes. Because if God ignored me, that means he got something greater for me. I, I want us to really look at our text here, what, 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 what Moses is going through. And what Moses, how Moses really essentially got to this point. To really understand the, the story of Moses. Moses is a Hebrew, and the Egyptians is an Israelite, and, and the Egyptians are coming in. They're taking over because the Israelites are uh, in Egypt because of Joseph. Y'all remember Joseph? There was a, the famine that hit the land, and Joseph allowed his family to relocate in Egypt. But the Bible says when Joseph died, there grew a Pharaoh that did not know the God of Joseph. And because of that, the Egyptians, Egyptians were threatened by the Israelites. And the Bible says that they were so threatened that Pharaoh placed certain taskmasters over them. In other words, uh, that, that really was one of the first forms of slavery, that he placed certain taskmasters over them to keep them in bondage. Taskmasters oftentimes look like this. It's not what goes against your will that, that causes you to be in slavery. Oftentimes, modern-day slavery requires something that you actually like that is unhealthy for you. And if I overfeed you in that area, then now I can control you. Y'all not going to like this. Y'all not going to like this. Why don't we see tobacco stores in certain areas of this city? Why don't we see ABC stores in certain areas of the city? Because they set certain taskmasters in certain communities that if you have a craving, we know in this day and time, we can't lock you up, we can't whoop you, we can't make you. But what we can do is keep you down by feeding a particular craving that is unhealthy. Look at your neighbor and ask them, what is your taskmaster? Yours might be social media because you really, the devil realized that every time you go on social media, you'll compare yourself to somebody's image. And so you're controlled by that. What is your task, master? It might be somebody else's marriage. It might be your money. It might be your job. It's the thing that controls you. Beyond, are y'all not bored, are you? It's the thing that controls you and feeds you. It, over, it overstimulates you. And so in our text, the, the Egyptians said, we've got to put certain taskmasters over them. 
And the Bible says this, and this is how you know you are anointed, MMCC, is the Bible says that the more the Egyptians, the more the Egyptians afflicted them, the more the Israelites multiplied. God knows. I'm going to try not to preach this thing, but I want you to shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, you touching the hand of somebody who's been afflicted, but somehow I keep multiplying. Everything about your life, when the enemy is trying to fight you, you can look back over your life and say, I don't know how I didn't lose my car. I really should, it should have been repossessed. And then if it was repossessed, I don't know how I keep getting everywhere I need to get. Somehow, some way, God keeps making ways out of no way. High five your neighbor and say, that's how you know you bless. Come on, tell them, wake up in here. Let me tell them, tell them, let me remind you of how blessed you are. So many people lost their minds. So many people could have, y'all not talking to me in here. So many people are on medication, but here you are in your right mind without medication because stuff that could have took you out, stuff that the enemy designed to kill you, it just made you stronger. It made you stronger. That's, that's, that's what the plight of the Israelites is, is realizing that the strength of Christianity, and y'all not going to like this. I got to hurry up and get through here. The strength of Christianity, the strength of following Christ uh, uh, is, is not your house, your car, or how blessed you are. Karina, the strength of Christianity was what it was birthed out of, pain. You can't be a Christian and skip the crucifixion process. Nudge your neighbor and say, you can't have resurrection until you have crucifixion. I don't know why we are okay with telling people there's a resurrection season coming and you ain't died yet. What's going to be resurrected? Thank you. Die. You got to die to your will. You got to die. And, and so, so sometimes we, 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 you know, everybody gives, you know, so much credence to Peter and all the other disciples. And we talk a lot about Jezebel. Watch out for the Jezebels in your life. But people rarely talk about Judas and the ministry of Judas. But everybody needs a Judas. We got somebody say Judas was a ministry. Because if it had not been for his betrayal. The son of man would have never been offered up to be crucified. And had there never been a crucifixion, there would have never been a resurrection. Sometimes you need to thank God when people give you up. Which leads me to my next point in, in our text is you got to be okay with people giving you up. Because as the Egyptians were purposely trying to essentially almost annihilate the Israelites because of their rapid growth. The Bible says that the mother of Moses, she has a child and out of fear because she doesn't want him to get killed, she swaddles him up, puts him in a basket. But here's the misconception. The misconception is is that she put him in the Nile. She did not put him in the Nile. She put him on the bank of the Nile because according to Exodus chapter 2, Miriam, Moses' sister, is sitting in the bushes watching over her brother to make sure he's going to be okay. Because here's the thing, the Egyptian women would walk past that area. And the mother's thought was is that if a woman will walk past there, she will see the child, she will take care of the child. But when it up, what ended up happening is a wave came, swept it away. And some of you are frustrated because certain people let you go and the wave swept you away. You, 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 you're frustrated, you're annoyed because they let you go when the truth is, they let you go because they didn't have the capacity to take care of you. Yeah. 
Is everybody okay? It's, it's going to get better. I'm perfectly fine. It's going to get better. I promise you. They let you go because they didn't have the capacity to take care of you. And I oftentimes say this. I remember there was a car that I really liked. And um, I couldn't afford it. And they came and repoed it. <laughs> That's just what it was. Don't, mm -mm, don't y'all act like that. Because some of y'all hiding your cars right now. <laughs> Amen. All right. That's better. Amen. Now that we're on the same page. Amen. Uh, in case you, they repoed what I could not afford. And some of you don't realize that when God yanks you out of somebody's life, he's repoing you out of their life because they could no longer afford you. You're going to have to be okay. You're going to have to be okay when certain people let you go. I was the type of person where I didn't hide the car. I knew I couldn't afford it. And so instead of me going to the grocery store in the movies in church like I did in the old paintings, and then they come pick it up and I walk outside and it's gone, I called them and said, hey, look, this is where I'm going to be. Come get it. And they came and got it. And I never saw it again because I could not afford it. God will interrupt your life, and he will repo you out of certain positions and areas and situations because the position, the area, the situation, the family, the group, the relationship, the friend, the job, whatever it is, can no longer afford you. I need you to hear me and hear me well. I'm not looking at a bunch of failures. I'm looking at a bunch of people who has extreme value in the kingdom, but you are not operating in your full potential because you are stuck on your plan and mad with God because he interrupted your plan. And so your definition of success is not lining up with God's will. Your definition of success is how much money can you have in the bank? And because you don't have the money in the bank, you don't see yourself as, see yourself as successful. When God says, I see you more than a number in your account. I see you more than a credit score. And so Moses now is floating and he gets picked up by an Egyptian woman. Pharaoh's daughter. And he gets into the high place and he's living in Pharaoh's house. He's growing up like Pharaoh's children. He's eating what Pharaoh's children eat. He's, he's experiencing all of this. And to the point where he grows up thinking he's one of them. He's in position. Well, a situation happened where Moses was walking and saw an Egyptian soldier uh, abusing a Hebrew slave. Well, Moses is triggered because Moses said, even though I've grown up like an Egyptian, there's still something on the inside of me that is connected to this Hebrew. So he gets mad at the Egyptian soldier and kills him. When he kills him, he realized, oh, snap. They're going to realize I'm a Hebrew. And even though I'm in Pharaoh's house, they're not going to save me. They're going to kill me. So Moses says, to heck with all of this, I'm running away. He runs out of Egypt into the wilderness. And he runs into an isolated place by himself. Look at your neighbor and say, I know exactly how that feels. Runner, track star. Runs. runs and he's in the wilderness and the Bible says that as he's in the wilderness according, he builds a whole family he builds a whole community he gets to the place Joyce where he says these words I'm good I'm good I finally got to a place of stability I'm good anybody ever been to that place I'm good I'm finally making enough money Finally waking up with peace. Finally, I am good. But then he looks to the mountain 
and he sees a bush on fire. And he tries to ignore it. But then he looks back because here's the thing. He's in the wilderness, so it's not uncommon for a bush to catch on fire. But what's so different about this is this bush ain't burning up. Keeps looking and finally says, I need to go check out what's going on. God has a way of getting your attention. <laughs> oh, look at your neighbor and say, God has a way of getting your attention to where you cannot ignore it. You can't sit there and say, I didn't see it. Yes, you did. I, I didn't know it. Yes, you did. I didn't hear it. Yes, you did. The only difference between you and Moses is you refuse to answer. <laughs> My time's almost up. And so, and so, because Moses is trying to ignore it, he can't ignore it, he goes up to the mountain. And when he goes up to the mountain, now, the Bible says, that as he gets ready to step, that there's a voice, Moses, Moses, say, what's going on? Here I am. It's me. And Moses is infatuated with the voice of the bush. And he's getting ready to take a step to get closer. And he said, wait a minute. Before you step any closer, take your shoes off. Why? Did the voice of the Lord require Moses to take his shoes off in an already dirty place? Usually when we take our shoes off, it's so that we won't track. But he tells Moses, take your shoes off. Because what you are getting ready to walk on is holy ground. I need you, Moses, to not just see, not just hear, but I need you to feel this. Because hear me and hear me well. I think, not I think, let me change that. I know that we need to get back to reverencing the sacredness of God's things. Hear my heart. I love dressing down. I love dressing up, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a posture in your heart that says, when I come in church, I'm not coming with any old kind of way. When God told Moses to take his shoes off, it was a sign of, you will not track where you came from over into my presence. Y'all not talking to me in here. Which means, when I enter into this, these doors, I'm not just entering into church. I'm entering into holy ground. And I refuse to track my bad week into God's presence. Y'all missed that. I refuse to track my childhood into God's presence. I refuse to to bring my dysfunction into God's presence. High five your neighbor and say, this is holy ground. God wants us to get the sensitivity back of feeling the Holy Spirit and experiencing the Holy Spirit. You know, people say, I don't dance. You know why you don't dance? Because you're too full of yourself. That's why. Because when the Holy Spirit gets a hold of you, you can't control what you do. I don't scream. You know why you don't scream? Because the Holy Spirit ain't got a hold of your mouth yet. You know why you don't jump? Because the Holy Spirit ain't got, uh, uh, got your members in check yet. Whenever you can sit in God's presence and dictate what you do and don't, don't do, that means there's more of you than it is him. I want you to high five somebody around you and say, neighbor, when I come in God's house, ain't no telling what I'll do. I may run this week. I may dance on beat, off beat. I may skip. I may sing off key. I may wave my hand because I'm not dictating what God wants me to do. So Moses don't come in this space. Don't bring where you were into this space. 
Because this space right here is a holy space. This space right here, Moses, is more about me than it is you. He tells Moses, I want you to go back to the place you ran from. Did y'all catch that? I want you to go back to the place you ran from. And some of you have not understood. And you think it's the devil. You think it's a you think it's a soul tie. You think it's a trap. You think it no. God is saying you've had your time of healing. Now it's time to go back to the place that you ran from because there's some people that you left. Well, God, I can't because I got a stuttering problem. Good. That's exactly why I called you. So I can work through your deficiency. Here's where I end because I think I'm boring somebody. God will always challenge you to the very thing that you are lacking or are deficient in. God will always, y'all don't want to hear me. God will always put an assignment in front of you that you don't think you are capable. Ain't it frustrating that the thing you want to do, he don't call you to? I wanted to play baseball, but he didn't call me to do it. I wanted to be in pharmaceuticals, but he didn't call me to do it. The thing that I want to do, he calls me away from. To do the thing that he needs me to do. Because in his space, it's more about him than it is about me. And I can tell that most of you have not entered into a place of prayer. And the reason being is because your prayer life is more about your laundry list than it is his glory. God, I need you. God, help me. God, make a way for me. God, open doors for me. God, heal my heart. God, no, 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 no. When you really get into the presence of the Lord, you start to be quiet. And God starts to talk to you. And God will tell you stuff like, go apologize to so-and-so. Uh-oh. God will tell you stuff like, go back and fix that with so-and-so. Y'all don't want to hear me. God will tell you, go and witness to so-and-so. I want to go to Chick-fil-A. No, God will say, go. Go to McDonald's. I don't like McDonald's. Go to McDonald's uh, because there's somebody at McDonald's uh, that needs what I have. But if, but if you're not open to divine interruption, you will become stubborn. And y'all remember what stubbornness is. Stubbornness is idolatry. It's the worship of your own opinion over God's opinion. I don't know. I don't think God's calling me to that. You don't even know his voice. So how can you dictate his call? Yeah, Uh-oh. So Moses, I'm finished. Moses, because I, I, I got to work through here. Moses finally gets to the place where he says, fine. Because the sign that I've experienced, I can not ignore it. I was good being out in the wilderness. Let me break this out because I feel this heavy. And I want to keep this down. Like, but I, I, want, I, I feel this heavy. Some of y'all in here are too comfortable being single. You're too comfortable being single. And your singleness has caused you to be more selfish than you should. Hear me? You know, I don't want to date again. I'm sick of it. The dating pool got pee in it. I, I done heard it all. 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 Mm -mm, I'm over it. Mm -mm, I ain't going back that way. I'm done. But what if the person God got for you to help expand your reach, you keep missing because you don't want God to interrupt your stubbornness? I wish I had a praying church today. I'm good. After that last experience, I'm good. But when you are open.
to the voice of God. There's nothing wrong with your plans. As long as you allow God to interrupt your plans. But the moment you marry your plans and you are not willing to divorce them is the moment when your life will become chaotic without a solution. And as I said the other night, for some of you in this season, the only solution is your swift obedience. How many of you in here, and I'm, I'm done because I'm going to pray, and, and I, 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 the Lord wants me to prophesy and, and bring some people to a place of healing. But how many of you in here, by showing of your hands, by showing of your hands, you ain't got to say what it is, but just by the showing of your hands, need God to speak in a certain area, but he won't speak in that area. Almost, almost half the church, more than half the church. All right, here's why. One of the major reasons why God will not speak to that area is because he already spoke. You just haven't obeyed. Abba, Father, and any good father will not keep repeating himself. Come on, parents, where you at? I'm not going to keep repeating myself. And God will give you an instruction. And then he'll be courteous. Give it to you again. He'll be kind. He'll use a prophet. He'll be nice. He'll use a billboard. He'll use a song. He'll use a preacher. He'll use a friend. But then he will be like he was in the Old Testament. And after a while, he'll become silent. Because all you need to do is... If you think back, go back and obey the last instruction. Everybody stand. I, I need you because I, I, I feel a strong spirit of, of prophecy in here today. And as a pastor, you all know I don't operate in prophecy because I see you all every week. But I want you all to be sensitive to what God is getting ready to do in this house. This is going to be a different Sunday. I want you to hear me. And, and I need to work this in, in the next few moments. Those of you who are saying, I feel a divine interruption hitting my life. And this teaching, this, 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 just kind of put some things into perspective. I had a plan. It was a good plan. I had a plan that included God. But after today, let's be honest and say, and we can say, this actually wasn't God's plan. It just included God. God wants to interrupt some things in your life. And the reason he's interrupting is because he's redirecting. I could hoop you and I could church you and we could jump and we can shout. But I will, I, I, I will be irresponsible to what the Lord wants to do today if I appeal to your emotions and not your intellect. God says, stop trying to outthink me. And when interruptions come, follow him. There's divine detours that are hitting your life. This altar is getting ready to open. And I, I want you to come. I need to do this today, altar worker. Usually y'all will come and pray, but I need to do this today. I need to pour out everything that the Lord has given me today. Visitors, we thank God for you. But you're not a visitor anymore. You family now. You family. So in this moment, I want y'all to hear me. Nobody's going to lay hands on anybody. God's going to do it today. Are y'all hearing me? I got, I got to give these instructions. As, as family visitors, please make yourself feel at home. If the Lord is telling you to run down to the altar, come down here. If the Lord is telling you to, to bow in your seat, bow in your seat. But there's getting ready to be an extreme divine interruption in here today. The Lord says, for some of you, I need to heal you so I can set you on the right track. Because I can't send you broken. For some of you, the Lord needs to focus you because you are too distracted. But today is your day where you're going to say, Lord, I'm okay with you interrupting my life. Because this last thing, and we're going to pray. Moses said, well, when I go, after he finally said, I'm going to go, they're not going to listen to me to, to let the people go. Who should I tell them? Send me. And God looks back at Moses and says, tell him I am. In other words, God is getting ready to be whatever you need him to be today. So on the count of three, run quickly to this altar because I feel it coming. One, 
two, three. Come on, quick, quick, quick. Quick, quick. Fill it up and lift your hands as you come worshiping. Spread out, spread out, spread out. Come on, there you go, there you go, there you go. Come on. Get as close as you can for some of you. Get as close as you can and spread out. Come on. Come on. Come on. As you're on this altar, I want you to lift your hands as high as you can get them. As high as you can get them. And for the next few moments, I need you to worship the Lord like never before. Whatever you need is here in this moment. Whatever you're looking for is here in this moment. And God says, I need you to reach out to me. I need you to see that burning bush. The Lord says he needs your availability. When I count to three, we're going to increase the volume. And I want what is in your heart to come out of your mouth. And I want you for the next few moments to begin to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, show me what you want me to do. I'm in my 30s, but I don't mind being interrupted. I'm in, I'm in my 50s. I don't mind being interrupted. I'm in my 60s, 70s. And Lord, here you are interrupting me now. God, give me strength. God, give me clarity. God, I feel like I'm double-minded because I keep going back and forth. Help me now, Jesus. I just graduated and I thought I would be here, but help me now, Lord. So right here, for the next 45 seconds, lift your voice up and pray to the Lord. One, two, three. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Come on, pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Answers. 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 You will not plateau here. Come on. Yeah. You will not plateau here. The Lord says, breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. I hear that. I hear that for several people. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Come on, church. Breakthrough. Come on. Yes. First, he wants to break your will. Come on. First, he wants to break your will. Come on. I want you to lift your voice. And as you begin to pray in your prayer, say, Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Come on. Lord, have your way. Come on. Lord, have your way. Come on. Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. The strength of the Lord. The peace of the Lord. Lord, have your way. Have your way. Your will over my will. Your way over my way. It don't make sense, Lord. It don't feel good, Lord. But if you want me to stay, I will stay. If you want me to go, I will go. Whatever, whatever you say, help my ears to be sensitive. Help my heart to be open. Help my mind to be cleansed. Come on, church, pray, pray, pray. Woo! Father, we lay our wheels down today, and we submit to who you are. We submit to your way. We submit to your word. Whatever you want to do, Father, you can use us. You can use us. You can use us. Whatever you want to do, however you want to move, Father, we lay our wheels down and we commit to what you have for us to do. We commit for what you have to do for us, oh God. We commit our wills to you. We commit our ways to you. We commit our thoughts to you. We commit our words to you. Father, no more of us. No more of our plans. No more of our own ways. But God, whatever it is that you want to do, we say do it, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. We 
we say do it Jesus we trust you yes Lord we trust your plan for us we trust your interruptions for us God if our will doesn't line up with yours cancel it now move it now divine interruption for our lives yes Lord yes Lord lead us and guide us break it up now my double horse break it up now break it up break it up now Break it up now. Break it up now. We pull it up down the Bahosaya from the very root of the places that we can't even explain. Oh, we pull it up from the root of our stubborn ways. We turn from it. Yes, Lord. Our stubborn ways. We turn from it. We won't be stubborn. We won't be complacent. We won't be lazy. We won't be lazy, oh God. But we'll stand firm in your word. We'll trust in who you are. We'll go after your way. Because your way is what's best for us. Your will is what's best for us. Your will is what's best for us. Have that own way. It's a little different this time. It's a little uncomfortable this time. Things may not be what we're used to, but God, if it's your will, we're going. If it's what you want to do, we'll accept it. If it's what you're saying, we'll receive it. Open our hearts to receive. We open our minds to receive. We open our eyes to see you. We open our ears to hear from you. We're your vessel today, yes, Lord. Yeah. Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. You can use us for your glory. You can use us for your glory. Yeah. For your glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the God that never makes a mistake. Your will is perfect. Your plans are right. You have never failed us, and you won't start today. So we submit to who you are. You are righteous. You are sovereign. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are the God of our lives, and we trust you to lead us. We trust you to guide us. We give ourselves to you. Yeah. No more confusion. Yes, Lord. No more stagnation, no more, no more, no more, no more, no more. No more standing still when we know we're supposed to move. No more laying down when we know we're supposed to stand. We stand in your glory. We stand in your strength. We stand in your power. We stand in your word. We stand in the strength of God today. Stand in the strength of God today. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap. But you got to stand in the strength of God. Stand in the strength of God. Stand in the strength of God. We got to stand in the strength of God. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. No more weekdays. No more weekdays. No more weekdays. Because in our weakness, your strength is made perfect. We humble ourselves to change it. We humble ourselves to change it. The truth of the matter is our plans seem good. Our plans seem right. The ways that we wrote it down, it seemed like it was a good idea. But God, if your plan is to change it, you do what you see fit. We submit to you today. You do what you see fit, God. If you want
want us to move, we're moving. If you want us to go, we're going. If you want us to speak, we're speaking. If you want us to walk, we're walking. Whatever, 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 whatever. Whatever your will is, Jesus, yeah. If you want us to move, we're moving. If you want us to speak, we're speaking. If you want us to walk, we're walking. If you want us to walk, we're walking. Whatever, 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 whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want us to pass, we're passing. If you want us to stay still, we're staying. Whatever you will for us, Jesus, we say yes. We say yes, yeah, I saw ya. We say yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes to your will, Jesus, yes to your way, God, yes to your way, God, yes to your way, God. It hurts, but it's yes. It's hard, but it's yes. It's tough, but it's yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Come on, open up your mouth and give him another yes. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you want us to leave them alone, we're moving away from it. Yes, Lord. Give us what to say. Give us what to say. Yes, Lord. Give us what to say, and we submit to you. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lord. We agree. Yes, Lord. We agree with your word. We agree with your word. We agree with your word. Correct us and guide us. We agree with your word. We agree with your word. Yeah. We agree, we agree, we agree, we agree. We agree with your word, God. Your will is what's best for me. 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 Your You can use me. Come on, lift your hands all over this place. All over this place. All over this place. All over this place. Right now, the Spirit of the Lord says, you've seen the bush. But he wants your availability. He wants to know how available you are. And so for the next 60 seconds, even those of you in the congregation, for the next 60 seconds, I want you to send up a worship like never before. The Lord said, I needed to cleanse you. I needed to get some things out of you. And the reason why the Lord said I needed to get some things out of you so I can put some stuff in you. And in these next 60 seconds, the Lord says strategy, ideas. The Lord says wisdom. Even your vision is going to become clear to where the Lord is even going to give you names. The Lord is going to show you faces. And the enemy is going to try to sin, sabotage your way. But the Lord is already going to show you redirection in every area of your life and things that are connected to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want y'all to rejoice with her because the Lord says there's some plans that you've been sitting on for years but your intelligence keeps getting in the way of those plans. The Lord says I'm going to breathe on them. The Lord says I'm going to breathe on them. You said by this time next year but the Lord said this year. Shh. You planning, but the Lord says, I'm interrupting your plans. You like to play it safe, but the spirit of the Lord said, I don't need safe. I need faith. This next business, when you start it, the Lord says, I'm going to send so many clients your way within the first three months. That is absolutely going to blow your mind. For, for the next 60 seconds across this building, every person in this building, I need you to lift your hands and send up a shout. Because God said, I'm going to drop something in your spirit. I'm going to drop something in your house. Come on, right now. Lift it up. 
Come on, lift it up. Come on, lift it up. Come on, lift it up. Try. Rain down on us. Rain on us. Rain on us. Rain on us. Rain on us. The Lord said, you will not visit this place anymore. He brought you out to stay up. The place of frustration. The Lord brought you out to stay out. Come on, Zion, worship him. Hey, lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice as high as you want to go. That's as high as your voice should be lifted. As high as you want to go. As far as you want to go. That's as far as you should send your voice. Come on and worship him. Hey, hey, hey. Divine interruption. Divine interruption. Divine interruption. Oh. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I'm stirring up the gift that has been lying dormant in my sons and in my daughters, the Lord says. I want you to embrace somebody around you. And tell them God is stirring up the gift in us. God is stirring up the gift in us. Come on. God is stirring up the gift in us. Oh my gosh. Something is being un unlocked in this house. Something is being unlocked in the lives of God's children. Something is being unlocked. Christy, give her a hug. Hug her tight. Hug her tight. Mm -hmm. Hug her tight. Hug her tight. Greatness. You are not by yourself. Loneliness will not overtake you. Loneliness will not defeat you. I feel you heavy, Lord. I feel by myself. I'm tired of being misunderstood. I'm tired of not being understood. I'm really a nice person, God. I'm really a good person. And the Spirit of the Lord says, I'm working on your heart. Your situation will not change you. Come on, I need y'all worshiping with her. God is healing right now. Come on, lift your voice for her. God is healing her right now. God is healing. Hallelujah. God is healing. Yes, 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 yes. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. Come here. Lift your hands up. Hallelujah. Church, I need you to lift your voice. I need you to lift your voice. I need you to lift your voice. Stay right there. Yes, get surrounded. Yep. I need you to lift your voice. This is a reoccurring thing. But we're going to break it off today. We're going to break it off today. The Lord says absolute 100% freedom. Greatness is in you, and it's getting ready to be released out of you. You will not visit this place anymore of not knowing what to do next. I release off of you the mindset of doing what I have to do. God, open up doors. God, open up doors change the uh, employment arrangement in the name of Jesus. We pull her from employment over into career. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We even pray for her body right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I'm going to say this even though she hasn't said it but it's been a fear. It's been in her mind and it's been in her heart. And I need y'all to shout when I say this. You will not experience what your mother experienced in your body. Come on, Zion, open your mouth. Open your mouth. I need y'all to work. Come on, come on. 
Come on. Put some strength behind it. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to go. But this is what we're going to do. Look at somebody and tell them, God just interrupted my plans. Look at somebody and tell them, God just interrupted my plans. But I heard the Lord say this. He interrupted your plans. But when I say this, I need you to go crazy and rejoice. The Lord said, I also interrupted the plans of the enemy. Come on. I interrupted the plans of the enemy. The devil had plans for you too. Depression, suicide, regret, frustration. But God said, I interrupted the plans of the devil. Throw your head back and shout, break through, break through, break through. shoulder and say breakthrough is yours yes it is breakthrough is yours yes it is oh yes Lord yes Lord come on keep your hand on that neighbor's shoulder and praise God for him pray for him in the name of Jesus, come on, break it off of them. Break it off of them. Come on, break it off of them. Break it off. We pray for breakthrough for this whole house. Breakthrough in the mind, breakthrough in the body, breakthrough in the spirit, breakthrough in the finances, breakthrough in the family. Every area of our lives, we shall break. Nobody left behind. We all coming out. We all coming out. We all coming out. We all coming through. We all going over. We all going over. We on our way out, Zion. Come on, church, pray. Pray for your neighbor. Pray the devil out of their lives. Pray the devil out of their homes. Pray the devil out. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, 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 come on, Zion. 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 You 
use your Holy Ghost, use your power, use your anointing, use your strength, use it now, use it now, in the name of Jesus. On the count of three, let that person go and give a shout out of your belly. One, two, three, shout, Zion. Oh! Shout, Zion. Shout, Zion. I'm sending freedom to your house. I'm sending deliverance to your house. Come on, Zion, open your mouth and shout right now. This, this week, y'all stay, everybody stay where you are. This week, this week, the Lord says, I've given you your instruction. Allow me to interrupt without your interruption. Don't fight God in this. Don't fight God, Moses. Because the Lord says that your yes your yes, your yes, touch yourself and say, my yes, my yes. is going to open the door to others' freedom. Others freedom. <laughs> People are going to ride off of your yes. That's why the fight is so intense, because the enemy is trying to make you abort your assignment. You will not, you will not be distracted by everyday life circumstances to where you abort the big picture and never see that me not having enough money is just a drop in the bucket according to what God wants to do ultimately. I don't want us to dance. We're not going to dance our way out of here. But I need you to walk in this freedom. Lift your hands. Give me some strings. Lift your hands up. Because you won't just be strong on Sunday. The strength is yours seven days a week. You won't just have a strong prayer life on Sunday, but seven days a week. God, for every hand lifted, release divine strength. For every hand lifted, Take the weight off. For every hand lifted. Every hand lifted. Let your presence follow us. Let your presence go before us. Remove the weariness off of the hearts. Remove the weariness off of the minds. We hear you calling. We see you. So here we are now on the holy ground. We worship you. We magnify you. We lift you up. God, thank you for filling us with strength. Thank you for filling us with power and authority. We give your name all glory. 
we give your name all on. It's in Jesus' name. Again, on your way to your seat, just, just, just touch yourself and say, I'm going to make it through this. 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 If you want to stay where you are, stay where you are. You don't have to move. You don't have to move. No worship posture. 